So after 14 days of ASQ, I'm back in Suvanaboom Airport. I've gone to some trouble, I'm being deported. I'm just kidding. No, I'm going to Krabi. I'm just joking with you guys. I'm heading over to Krabi. I'm not getting deported. I'm not that bad of a person. Although I am pretty curious to see how tourism in 2020 domestically is gonna be like. If you guys are like me and you travel way too much for your own good, I'd say definitely look into getting a priority pass or some type of airport lounge rewards card because you're gonna be getting a ton of delicious free meals through your credit card, obviously. So obviously I got some Chinese dim sum, some wontons. These are all covered by my credit card because it has a airport lounge benefit of priority pass. So while I'm eating, in this incredibly small ass table and about to board my flight to head over to Krabi. I was kind of wondering, you know, I've seen so many videos about like Phuket, Pattaya, uh, Pattaya, Hua Hin, all these other places that are severely impacted by tourism, you know, because of the pandemic. Thailand heavily relies on tourism to generate any type of revenue. You know, last year they generated 62 billion US dollars for all of their tourism. Now, I can only imagine, I mean, they're just way in the negative right now. You know, a lot of small businesses are hurt. You know, it's it's not looking too good at all. So, it's got me kind of wonder how traveling around, you know, like a place like Krabi's gonna be like in December of 2020, you know, about six, seven months, maybe more into the start of the pandemic. I'm really curious. I bet it's gonna be kind of a ghost town. It's not going to be looking too good. Alright, so June is checking us to our hotel right now. After an hour and a half flight, we are now here in Krabi. It's a very hot, popular tourist destination for locals and tourists coming here to travel here in Thailand. We were actually staying at a chain luxury hotel called Dusitani. You know, I'm not saying this just to flex on you guys. Normally Dusitani daily stays would range around 7,000 to 8,000 baht. So around a little over $200 a night, really pricey. However, due to the pandemic, travel has been a lot cheaper lately. I'll explain more about this later. It's very rare that I'll stay at any type of luxury hotels. I'm more of a budget traveler, hostel kind of guy. However, I'm kind of getting too old for hostels. So this is actually pretty nice to, you know, treat myself, especially during this special opportunity. But dang, I'm, I really appreciate just being able to stay at like a nice place like this, especially during this time when everything is on the cheap cheap. Holy shit guys, this is the nicest place I've ever stayed at. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve any of this. Dude, check out this view. God damn. This is seriously, this has to be the nicest place that I've ever stayed at in my entire, th uh, I'm not gonna tell you guys my age, but my entire years of existence. Holy crap! Really? I don't deserve this. Me? <laughs> Me? On this place? Me? I don't deserve. <laughs> I don't deserve this place. Come on, it's it's nice. Like it, it, you deserve it after the ASQ BB. Yeah, ASQ wasn't too bad. Uh, I guess I can treat myself. <laughs> okay, so you know how earlier I was telling you guys that normally. You know, luxury hotels like Dusitani here in Thailand usually would run you around seven to eight thousand baht per night, so that's gonna be around two hundred to two hundred sixty U.S. dollars per day. Well, we got it at a very discounted rate. I'll let June explain. So this is my lovely girlfriend, June. June's gonna be explaining how you're able to get a discount, or in actuality how you're able to get government subsidized discounted rates, especially in these top shelf luxury hotels all over Thailand. I'll let her, I'll let her explain. 
Okay, so you know like the COVID kind of like screws up like a lot of businesses in Thailand like it's, and we rely so much on tourism so to boost like uh, stimulate the tourism in Thailand the government uh, decided to uh, give like a uh, subsidy uh, for Thai people to go travel like domestically so they subsidize um, 40% of the hotel cost and they will also give like a uh, like a coupon like a cash voucher like for 600 baht per day and that you can use it for like 40% baht of your total bill per, per time so like for 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 this place uh, we got the room the full price was actually 4600 baht with the 40% subsidy we only pay 60% which is uh 2400 baht per night so that's why we we can afford to come here. So just to double check that there's all the hotels, you know, all the luxury hotels have a 40% mm, discount. Not all of them. Only those hotels that registered like under this uh, program, then then you the customers can get, Thai people can get the discount like this. If like it's like a boutique hotel that don't register themselves into this uh, like program or like government subsidy, then then even if you stay there, you cannot like claim the 40% discount from the government. Once you guys finish your 14 day ASQ, if you guys are planning on, you know, just getting away from that rough 14 days and just going to like a nice place like Krabi or Phuket or any, any, top, any type of tropical place outside of Bangkok and you're traveling with your Thai wife, your Thai girlfriend or your Thai friend, Thai husband, as long as they're a Thai citizen, then they're able to qualify, or the, excuse me, they're able to apply for this government subsidy. If you want to stay at a nice luxury hotel like a Dusatani or a Pullman G Hotel, or Sofitel, Sofitel, or like Conrad Hotels. Conrad, yeah. So if you Intercon, guys Intercon, Intercontinental, yeah. Any of those top luxury hotels, like I said before, have a, a Thai companion with you, and they can apply for these government subsidies for these nice luxury hotels. Where do you apply for them? How do you apply for them? You have to reach, uh, as a Thai, you register yourself. Uh, and in this like scheme, it's called Teo Doi Kan. I think everybody knows uh, about this scheme already. Is yeah. it? Is it? A, is there? Is this a website that it's they have to? It's a website. To? Yes. Okay, I'll provide the website, or actually June will tell me, and I'll provide the website in the description down below. So then tell your Thai girlfriend, Thai wife, Thai husband you know, Thai companion, Thai friend, whatever, register on the website and then you guys can go on a trip and treat yourself during this nice, lovely stay. Even though the world is going complete shit right now, you kind of have to find some good out of all of this. So not too many people, people are traveling. Might as well, I mean, if you guys are in the position, which I hope you are, treat yourself, go have a nice, wonderful trip and just kick back and relax. Yeah. Good job. Thank you, baby. Earlier when I said that this place costed around seven, 8,000 baht, definitely huge exaggeration, my bad. But let me show you guys a grand tour of this place. It's pretty nice. I am definitely gonna be taking advantage of this lovely bathtub. You got the showers, you got the sink. Oh, showers are right here. Oh man, this is one thing I definitely miss about Thailand that they didn't even have this in my ASQ hotel. The infamous bum gun. I swear, because of you, I have a very hygienic butthole. So we're gonna be heading on a tour. Uh, we're gonna be checking out four different islands. I'm gonna put it in the description below. Uh, this next slot is gonna be slightly racist and yeah, there's no other way to cover this, but during this whole pandemic season, a lot of the tour companies would get most of the revenue from mainland Chinese tourists and Westerners, such as Americans. Uh, the shitty part about traveling with them is that they are, for the lack of a better term, rowdy as hell. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to do tours with them. But, you know, unfortunately, with nobody traveling this year, there are no mainland Chinese tourists, no Americans. And I can talk shit about them because I am both American and Chinese. <laughs> 
So if you guys want to travel and go on these cool tours, uh, this tour that we're going on right now, it's mostly local Thais and Japanese and some Koreans. It's making the travel experience much more enjoyable. But all in all, I do wish that Westerners, Americans, and mainland Ch Chinese tourists come back to Thailand soon just to help stimulate the declining and suffering tourism economy here in Thailand. But for now, I'm really going to enjoy not being around them because I'm never going to experience like this. We're, we're never going to experience like this ever again. If you guys give me shit about this in the comments for being racist, remember. I'm American and I'm Chinese, so I can talk shit on them. If you guys want to do some proper rock climbing here in Thailand, come out here to Rayleigh Beach. This is what you're going to be scaling. Damn! That looks insane. As we're walking through the shores of Rayleigh Beach, I notice it feels kind of weird just traveling without my mask. I feel a little bit, I feel a bit guilty in a sense that I feel like I should be doing the right, the right thing, the proper thing, but at the same time it actually feels incredibly liberating that I can just enjoy the nice scenic views here on Rayleigh Beach and not have to worry about wear a mask. Of course, if, of course when I'm in Bangkok I'm definitely going to be masking up but since you're in a remote area like here, it's one less thing to worry about. It's actually pretty nice. It's really nice. It's so soft and fine. You think this is better than Phuket? Yeah, I think better than... So me and June were discussing about this, but how the hell do you... I mean, this is a, obviously a magnificent piece of landscape and art, but how the hell, if you were to scale this thing, how do you even start? You know, even without if even without rope, this is so so massive. It's beautiful. I want to climb it. I'll probably end up killing myself doing this. So as June and I are leaving Raleigh Beach, we're walking through a incredibly nice resort villa. Like this, def this place is definitely like a premium spot if you want to get away from civilization and just stay within the deep re recesses of like tropical paradise. The place is called Raya Wadi, but such a beautiful premium place like this in high season would be fully booked. But we just passed by the patio area and I hate to say it, but there is barely anyone here. So I feel pretty guilty about resorts and hotels and accommodations that aren't getting the business that they should be getting. So if you guys are ever in Thailand, definitely help out the uh, economy here. Is I would hate for a place like this, such a beautiful villas, place like this, to go out of business. It's fucking nice. I bet this spot is super cheap right now. So take, it, take advantage of the low prices, the government's stimuluses that they're offering, offering Thai locals. Man, it's a perfect getaway. Don't let this place go out of business. Yo, check this out. June was telling me that this is the relative, the cousin of the Komodo dragon, and its saliva is pretty poisonous. In Thai, it means like, like fuck, like, like, like very bad. Like, so that thing, that thing is called here. So the thing is called fuck? Yeah, like, yeah. It's a vulgar, like, nickname of that. Thing. Whoa, okay. The Thai language has some pretty cool words. Krabi means sword, and here, well, that Komodo dragon, it means fuck. Interesting. So we're here in our final island of this uh, tour. And uh, what's really cool about this island is that the, this island and this island and this island, all three of them, this place is called Tub Island. But this shore over here connects to each other, especially during low tide. Usually in the, mor in the morning times, it's high tide, so this shore area is unwalkable, but come late afternoon, you can actually walk through here. But for some reason, the tide's way too high from this island to this island, so this one's obviously unwalkable, but normally is. And I think this area that makes it, called, uh, that makes it walkable, it's called Opening Sea. 
or I think in Thai it's called Taliwag. But yeah, pretty cool. Fun fact. It feels like you're Moses walking through here, parting through the Red Sea, except that we're in Thailand. So we came back from our tour, rested up a little bit back in the hotel room, and definitely came out, came back to the resort area, and we didn't really properly get a chance to explore the grounds here in Dusitani. It is extremely nice. There's a lot of open space. There's a lot of green, a lot of well-trimmed grass, a lot of landscapes, a lot of palm trees, a lot of vegetation. The nature is very abundant here in this resort. Granted, this is the first time that I've actually stayed at anywhere this nice or this fancy, not even back in America. No, I was too poor to afford any of that stuff back in America, but now I'm not so poor. <laughs> but that, but don't worry guys, I won't get complacent. I'm still gonna be working, still gonna be out churning more videos and more content for you guys. But I just wanna say that around here, it is ridiculously, ridiculously gorgeous. And even right behind me, over here, it's got a nice swimming pool. There's multiple swimming pool locations. You're definitely gonna get way more value for your money here in Thailand than you would back in, I don't know, I don't know where Americans and Canadians travel to. In Cozumel, in Playa del Carmen, in Mexico. No, just come here instead. Service is amazing. It's good to just kind of walk around. It's more of like a, a healthy wellness center, you know, where you're just gonna be chilling, relaxing, eating a ton of, fattening up and eating a ton of good food. I'm just being completely happy, happy and content in this nice paradise of Thailand. This place is amazing. guys can hear from the fireworks it is officially January 1st 2021 I just want to wish each and every one of you guys a happy and safe New Year's hopefully 2021 is gonna be much better it's gonna fill us more with more fulfillment more joy stay safe stay safe out there happy New Year's Sawadee be my cop cheers I'll see you I'll see you guys in 2021. Take care.